Yo, what up everybody, it's Dale Stewart, and today I am doing the In the Trenches writing tag. I was tagged by Robinson Castillo, so his links are down below, you can go check that out. All my links are down below, and there's a few other cool author tubers links down below as well. So be sure to go check out all their channels, and subscribe, like their videos, whatever. Do what you gotta do, um, you know, support everybody. So, let's just get into it. Uh, question number one. Do you have a sweetheart novel, short story, poetry project, a project that turned you into a serious writer? Um, I don't really know if there's a story that actually turned me into a serious writer. I had uh, started a project, I guess, um, back in high school. Um, it turned out to be like a trilogy. It was going to be called Left But Not Forgotten. Um, that wasn't serious at all is a lot of crap actually um, I plan on revisiting it at some point and making it to what it could be um, but whenever I actually decided to be a serious writer was while I was writing my Metagore series and it wasn't the project itself it wasn't the story it wasn't that I was like so in love with the story that I wanted it to be published um, I'm, I'm in love with the story regardless um, if it got published or not, you know. My feelings for the story hasn't uh, changed any. Um, but it wasn't until I was almost done with the first draft and I was receiving all this positive uh, feedback and encouragement from other authors and readers about it. Um, and all that positivity kind of sparked me to actually pursue it seriously and to pursue publication in a sense. So, yeah. Question number two. Do you or do you ever plan to work on a series length project? It seems like that's the only thing uh, I can work on. Uh, like I said, my original uh, first project I started back in high school um, that I kind of DNF'd uh, was Left But Not Forgotten. It was a trilogy. Um, my Metagor series is a series. Um, it's going to be four books. It originally started out as just being a standalone, and then it jumped up to being a trilogy, and then it jumped up to be a five book series, and now I've kind of worked it back down to four, um, which is where I'm pretty sure it's going to stay. Um, so. Yeah, I haven't really worked on a standalone. I started a side project, which I was thinking it was going to be a standalone, um, called The Gift of a Child. I've been kind of working on it off and on um, in the background. But I am now considering to write a companion novel for it called The Ballard of a Child. So we'll see. And at some point, I might actually write a sequel to those stories. I don't know. Uh, I did kind of play with that idea for a little bit but I never really cared too much for that idea. Um, so it'll probably just be the standalone or just the standalone with its companion, um, which I'm really leaning forward to doing the companion. There are some other stories that I plan on writing, um, which may also end up being multiple stories instead of just one. Uh, one is a memoir of uh, more of my youth, um, late teens, early 20s, um, and my musical uh, investment that I had um, into rapping and stuff like that. Um, and that whole time period, um, being you know right out of high school, going to college, Doing some things I probably shouldn't be doing, and uh, just all the people that were involved in my life at that time. Um, I was planning on writing a memoir, kind of to not necessarily celebrate, but oh, I can't think of the word, but just kind of embody that, um, you know. And then as I was kind of developing that in my mind, it kind of turned into a series of. Well, a duology, not really a series, but a duology. Um, so yeah, there's that. And then there's some others 
that are supposed to be standalones, um, which I might make a duology or trilogy or full blown series or something. I don't know, but yeah, that's about the only thing I can't write. Even if I attend for it to be a standalone, it seems to develop, develop into more. So, yeah. question number three. Thoughts on mixed form projects. Short stories contain poems, novels containing short stories, etc. Um, I, I don't ever plan on writing anything like that. Um, not really. Not unless, well, I guess my memoir um, thing that I just mentioned, since it was uh, about my musical, whatever you want to call it, hobby, um, you know, that time of my life, I am thinking about including lyrics and stuff from different songs that we did um, in that. So I guess that would be a form of poetry inside the novel memoir. Um, so, yeah, I guess. Um, but besides that, I'm not really plan on doing any other type of collection of, you know, mixed uh, forms. Um, actual other people's projects like that, I mean, it, it works at times, you know. I feel like there's a certain requirement it has to meet for it to actually fit together properly. But, yeah, it can be done. I haven't actually, I don't think I've actually ever read anything like that, though. But, I mean, I'm sure it can be. I don't see why it wouldn't. Just like an anthology can be a mixture of short stories, flash fiction, poetry, whatever. Um, I don't see why that couldn't be. Question number four. Where do you picture publishing in 10 years? <sighs> Sorry, there's a cat hair on my phone. Uh, publishing in 10 years. I think more authors are probably lean towards self-publishing. Or there would be, maybe not more authors would lean to it, but there would be more of a market for self-publishing. Um, I know in the past couple of years it's really been booming, um, going you know farther than what a lot of people thought self-publishing would. Um, I feel like it would just gain in accountability and in you know versatility. Um, I think big traditional publishing um, houses or whatever will probably suffer a little bit from at least getting new clients. Um, I feel like there will always be need for traditional publishing. Um, there will always be people that would rather have somebody else do all the um, work, whatever that traditional publishers do that uh, sub-publishers are going to have to do on their own. Um, but I feel like how the things are going now, self-publishing will probably become more accountable, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, I feel like self-publishing will be more you know, accepted um, and versatile and more accessible uh, in forms of... Uh, buying books from different uh, places. I know a lot of brick and mortar places originally didn't accept uh, self-published authors unless it was just like local bookstore or something. And just really recently, a lot of big name bookstores have opened up to allowing self-published authors in their stores um, if they meet a certain uh, credentials and stuff. So I feel like that would just advance over time. Question number five. If you could have one booktuber review your book, who would it be? I actually have sent my uh, debut novel, uh, it was a proof copy of it, I had sent it to uh, Murphy Napier um, to review. She hasn't read it yet, she hasn't reviewed it, I don't think she's put it on her monthly TBR yet, but I have actually sent it to her. Um, I love all of her reviews and all of her reading vlogs and stuff like that, so it would be Murphy. Um, so yeah, check out her channel. Maybe sometimes she'll do a dedicated review or something for it. Um, but yeah, that would be it. Question number six. Ryder quarrels are stuff of legend. What author alive today would you want to spat? 
Oh, um, I honestly don't know. Well, today would you want to spend? I, I don't know. Um, I know kind of one big author kind of in my genre, I guess. Um, right now it's George R. R. Martin because um, of Game of Thrones and such. Um, it's medieval fantasy. It's why I write. Um, I took a lot of inspiration from him, and I know a lot of uh, quarrels and you know beef people have with people are usually people around the same genre um, as well as same audience because even if the beef is legitimate, um, you know that's why because they don't like the way the other person's doing something, or whatever, and they feel like it's affecting them. Or even if it's kind of staged, um, they're doing it just to build hype, um, to gain their uh, audience towards them, in a sense, you know. Um, so that's probably who I would uh, do it with. I mean, not saying I'm going to or anything. I don't really care um, about any kind of beef, stuff like that. But I'm just saying, um, you know, that's how most beefs with, like, celebrities or, you know, artists of any sort is usually depicted um either to gain fans or just for disagreement but usually for disagreement people just kind of eh. when they actually make it public it's you know try to draw in the other person's audience because they start you know trying to figure out who you are and what you've got done and then oh well this person isn't that bad either you know so yeah question number seven have you ever been part of a writer's group? Yeah, I have. Um, I'm on a lot of Facebook groups. Um, fiction writing, uh, fantasy writers. Uh, I don't even know what all there's. The hashtag author tubers, author tube academy. Um, I don't know what all other ones. Um, but I'm on all kinds of other Facebook groups as well as a local group which has a Facebook page as well um, called Writers Inc. of Northeast Arkansas. Um, we have monthly meetups um, locally um, in person so I am involved in a in-person meetup group as well as just internet groups um, and I enjoy them. I'm a, there's different uh, things you get more um, actual feedback from in-person groups um, like critiquing and stuff but a lot of the other groups I get more of actual information of uh, on the business end or other criteria and stuff like that and my phone keeps turning off well it's not turning off it's just going black whatever <laughs> Number eight, do you have a favorite writing craft book? Yes, I do. Um, I have a couple, not many, a couple. Because um, most of my writing craft stuff I find here on AuthorTube or in those writing groups or something. So I don't buy a bunch of craft books. I do have a couple. Um, I think I have three. And the one I like, I can't remember what it's called. Back in my bedroom, I watched to sleep, so I'm not gonna go in there and get it. But it is something about how to write fantasy and sci-fi, which it also kind of talks about um, steampunk and stuff like that. Um, and I like it not necessarily for the craft of how to write it and the approach and this and that, but in it, it has a bunch of world-building uh, tips and helpful uh, information. Um, like for medieval fantasy and I guess for sci-fi and stuff like that. I mainly use it for fantasy. But they have uh, like jobs and stuff like that that was common back then. They have like some terminology in it. They have uh, different types of government systems which really helped uh, trying to build my world so it wasn't all just the same. Um, and how different governments work and how the political system is different. Um, like the hierarchy and how it's elected and how it governs laws and all this. And it also has a list of different wildlife and different races uh, for fantasy, um, which in my novel I have 24 different races and 
40, probably 50 different forms of wildlife and everything is fantasy. Nothing is just a plain dog, cat, whatever. Um, there are some canines and felines, but they're not like ours. They're fantasy, so yeah. Um, so that helps some. Um, I also found there were others online, different places and such, so yeah. That would be my favorite, just because it's markets more towards me. Um, I also have one to help write with emotions, which I find is probably the most helpful because I don't feel like I write emotions very well. Um, I'm more action and dialogue, but actually conveying emotion um, through like the narrative and stuff. Not really. So I use that book to help me with that, to attempt to write emotions, I guess. Oh shit, my phone's blowing up. All right, uh, do you have a least favorite writing craft book? No, not really. Like I said, I've got three. One's for fantasy, one's for uh, emotions, and the other is more for, not really writing, but more marketing your writing, in a sense. Um, and I found all of them's pretty helpful, so I don't really have a least favorite, I'm sure. If I bought more, I would find some that I didn't really feel very useful. Um, question number 10 is just to tag people. So I tag all the author tube tribe that's down below. So if your name's down below, go uh, do this video. Yeah. I'm not going to name off everybody because I don't know. I can never remember. But yeah, they're all down there. Um, I don't want to leave anybody out. So you know who you are, author tube tribe. Yeah. But yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Like I said, subscribe, hit the like button, dislike button, whatever. I don't care. You do you, I do me. That's just how things work. But yeah, subscribe, hit the like or dislike button, ring that bell so you know when I upload uh, new videos, which are typically on Mondays, but today is not Monday, which is why you need to ring that bell so you know when I'm uploading. Um, but now, uh, usually my normal upload schedule are Mondays, but I've been tagged in a lot of uh, tag videos like this, as well as I've gotten some last minute ideas for videos here recently. So all these bonus videos I'm going to be doing will be on Thursday. Yeah, today's Thursday, ain't it? It's not why I'm filming it. Um, but all my bonus videos will be on this day each week if I do one. Um, I might not do one every week. This week I did. Um, but my normal videos will be on Monday. And yeah. So click that bell and you'll know when I actually do upload a bonus video. Instead of just being like, oh, hey, he uploaded a video a couple days ago. I didn't know. Um, but yeah. My debut novel, The Battle for Metagore, is out on paperback and ebook. It is finally up on ebook form on Amazon, finally. They still haven't got the paperback, um, but you can go to Barnes & Noble, order a paperback. Um, there's a bunch of other links down below you can order uh, either the paperback or uh, ebook from. Um, so go check that out. If you do read it and you enjoy it, or even if you don't enjoy it, leave a comment on Amazon or on Goodreads or both would be amazing. Um, and if you just want to do a review video of it, I would enjoy it. Um, I think that's like my dream. <laughs> it's just to see a review video. Um, but yeah, you just review it. Let me know what you think. Um, yeah. Just that thing. Isn't that thing look pretty? I think it does. But yeah, that's about it. I've got Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube. All my links are down below. Check out my website at dlstewartauthor.com. You can read a free sample of my book if you don't want to buy it on there. I also post blogs. I've got some history of those different kingdoms from my novel on there, um, as well as other goodies. You can go to my website and sign up for my newsletter. You get the first two chapters of the Battle for Metagore sent to you your email where you can read it before you ever buy it just to kind of see if it might be something you like, something you don't like, whatever, you know. So you can kind of get a taste of it without actually spending your money, you know. A lot of authors ain't going to tell you that. A lot of authors will probably just tell you, buy it. I don't know. 
I'm not one of those. I don't care if you buy it or not. I wrote it just for the fun of it, honestly. Um, if y'all buy it, that would be fucking amazing. But if not, oh well. Yeah, I ain't gonna tell you what to do. You do you, I do me. You know, whatever. But anyways, that's about it. So, peace out. Yelly. Everybody love everybody.